All right, guys, welcome back to the shop. We are working on our 450 ES 4x4, 1998, I believe. It's a, it's a solid machine with title, always love that. One or two owners, so I'm told. We picked this up back in January, I guess. It's been sitting three months, the battery's dead, you see the chargers on it. A uh, couple things, so we brought this in. Problem was it had a shifting issue, and, and I fixed it, but I didn't fix it enough. I did a clutch adjustment on it. That did help, um, but it didn't fix it. And so today we're gonna do a, uh, a bypass, is we're gonna install some relays. We're gonna bypass the electronics, the ECU, if you will, that controls the shifter. It uses the factory buttons. When you get on it, you're not gonna know, you're not gonna be able to tell. This is not one of those hacks that, you know, you got a toggle switch or touching some wires with some tape. We're, we're not doing that. It's actually a kit and it's actually really cheap. If you've got one of these, they're on eBay, you can pick them up for probably less than $20. It's just a few basic wires. It's plug and play no cutting no splicing just kind of a, a no-brainer if you will what it does is it bypasses the little computer and the, the angle sensor and and all of that extra stuff that you really just don't need when you just want to shift up and down um, so we're going to do that that's the big thing again this machine we picked up the flip i don't have a four-wheel drive i would like a four-wheel drive but I can't justify another machine, if you know what I mean. So uh, we're gonna let it go. And you know, maybe we'll find another one. The things I look for in this particular year model, these fender flares, they get super, super brittle from sitting in the sun and they're always busted. These are not, these look really good. Uh, they're very expensive if you were to replace them. So if you're looking for one of these machines, always look at the fender flares. These are the original tires from 1998 and they are shot. This one was flat. As you can see, they're dry rotted, they're dry cracked, whatever you want to call them. This one actually, I think is missing a chunk out of it. I was riding and it shot off a piece of the tread. Uh, the front ones are actually not bad. They're not bad at all. Um, they seem to have weathered better. The tread looks good, but they are a little, little aged. Bumpers, we know a big thing to always look for is bumpers. The bumpers are straight on this machine. You can tell it hasn't been hit by a truck or a train or anything. This aluminum skid plate is kind of a tail. They, if you hit a stump really good, you know, it's going to bend it and you're not going to be able to straighten it out. That one looks really good. It's got a little crinkle on one side. Those plastic uh, lower control arm guards always get broken. There's always a stick that gets shoved between them. Uh, I rode this machine at the test drive no clicking from the axles i did a hard left i did a hard right did several circles uh not donuts but circles and uh and no clicking from the from the axles at all so that's really good differential is nice and clean i don't see where any oils come out of it uh just you know overall headlights y'all know i'm a big big fan of the headlights they get busted out and people don't replace them so overall first impressions though it is filthy Someone's painted the wheels. This, the black wheels looked good at one time, I'm sure, but all the paint has come off of the wheels. I'm hoping we can get the rest of it off and go back to the original silver. I think that would look good. Um, all the center caps are still in it. So uh, what's it take to get this machine to market? Well, I'm a huge fan of a nice looking seat. We do a lot of upholstery around here and I don't really like upholstery, but it's an easy thing to do. It's not expensive. and. Uh, if you if you buy a pneumatic stapler it's 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 easy highly recommend you invest in a pneumatic stapler here's the cheapest one off of amazon it's like 30 bucks i've probably done five or six seats with it we're fixing to do another seat every time i do that it gets a better and better value so today's project we're going to do some upholstery we're going to recover the seats we're going to install this wiring bypass it's a seri series of relays as you see it's all plug and play it's all factory connections it even has terminals at the uh, positive and the negative it's just i think i get 14 dollars for this kit y'all if this does what it says it does that's that's a no-brainer uh master cylinders go bad they are rebuildable but 
it's a lot of time and it's in and, and you can still have a piston that's scored that's still going to leak and it's going to eat up uh seals so this is you know my my favorite here maddie uh, i'm sure i'm saying that wrong but we're going to go with it now a couple things to look at let's compare this one to the one that's on here it's the same size the lever's the same we can swap the original lever back to this housing if we want to kind of keep the bare aluminum look the factory look it does have this embossing here for a rear view mirror i know that maybe that's a, a you know deal breaker for somebody but it doesn't bother me just don't put a mirror in it the sight glass is in the front just like the factory this is the biggest thing to watch out for is where your line hooks up there's a lot of them the line hooks up on the far side i can't point to it with this one hand a lot of them hook up over here and that changes the routing of this line it makes it kind of kick out here kind of funky so when you're looking at aftermarket master cylinders make sure your line pickup your your attachment point for your hydraulic hose is in the same location so i really like this one as you see it's a very close copy of the original it does have a provision here for a brake light switch here on the bottom this does not have it you can take this off by removing that screw and throwing that in the garbage if you don't want it on there but nine out of ten i'm going to give it a pass we'll swap the lever over we'll keep the bare aluminum lever and then that way they still match so we'll swap out the angles a little different too but these will swap over so uh that's a home run there i think and, and cheap i think this was 16 17 dollars on on the uh the amazon there there's a link in the description for all of this if you need anything tires i know they win races tires is what wins a race but they also look good <laughs> when you can find them check these out now i picked these up a couple months ago when we first got the machine look at that they're brand new they still have the nipples on them they were probably ridden around the dealership parking lot now a couple things you need to know about tires not all wheels are the same these actually came off a of rincon which means the offset that's the back spacing is wrong on these wheels if you were to bolt these wheels up as they sit the back tires would be sucked in and let me show you the, the comparison now the front ones would work of course the rears are on the bottom so yes they will bolt up it's the same four on four bolt pattern it's the same center cap that's really the same wheel on the inset but the offset is the distance between the face of the rim the mounting surface and the lip here whether measured on the front or measured on the back side of the wheel as you see here we have less than the depth of my finger from the mounting surface to the front edge of this wheel look at the distance on this wheel this wheel is my finger and another finger so there's probably a four inch offset here or here there's about a two inch offset so if you were to bolt these wheels on as they are they would suck into the, the machine and they would sit inside about where my hand is in relation to where this tire is and it just wouldn't look that good now there's a couple ways around that you could buy some two inch wheel spacers and you can put on the back and kick those wheels out and run them as they are the tires are the exact same size front and rear that's why i bought them and honestly when i went to get them i didn't even pay attention to the offset i was only focused on getting the tires i had every intention of putting the the tires on this machine when i saw the wheels i thought whoa what a win these are aluminum wheels they only come out on a few models but they are aluminum they are not steel they are super light and they are super expensive if you had to buy them from the factory so you could go and spend another 50 60 dollars on wheel spacers run these aluminum wheels and probably gain a little horsepower and i mean that just because your rolling resistance of steel wheels would be less everything else would be exactly the same or you can do what i'm going to do i'm going to dismount these tires i've got a tire machine y'all seen it we're going to clean up those black wheels we may paint them black again we'll see how much of that black comes off we'll put the new tires on these factory wheels put them on the machine and then we'll go to ebay y'all know i have an ebay store those wheels are 200 dollars a piece just for the wheel new in the box now these are not new in the box but i don't think they were ridden more than just being in the parking lot as you can tell they are they're they are just near perfect so i gave 200 dollars for the entire set of four wheels and tires i'm going to take the brand new tires and put on this machine with those wheels 
I'll take these almost new wheels. I'll sell them for $100 a piece. I will double my money and put brand new tires on the machine. That's how you do it, y'all. So this machine needed a master cylinder. It had a, 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 a shifting issue. It definitely needed a seat cover. It's real common. The machine sit out. The vinyl gets, gets starts to draw up and gets tight and it splits at the stitching. Every time you get on it, it kind of pulls, pulls, pulls off this edge. And uh, as long as your foam is good, like this one is here, you're in good shape. You can build that up with another piece of foam, or you could cover it and build it up with like duct tape and then cover over it. What you want to do is you want to cover up this edge of the plastic seat here, this white you see. And the reason you want to cover that up is because it will cut into the vinyl as the vinyl is pulled over it. I mean, this, this cover is, <laughs> is really, really, tough it's it's hard as it can be very common they almost all do that depending on where the, the machine is, is stored so this is it we're going to kind of put this all in one video probably these are simple fixes that just about anybody can do and and it was told to me once when you have something and little things start breaking fix them as they break don't let them build up otherwise you end up with this you've got an excellent machine that looks like a lot of things are wrong with it but they're all really kind of penny any if you will they're just nickel and dime little things all total we will probably invest two three about three hundred dollars into the cost that i paid for this machine it'll be ready to go to market it will have new master cylinder front brand new recovered seat brand new factory original tires and the shifting issue will be corrected it's a home run in my book all right so uh went ahead and started doing some disassembly all the basic stuff you all know how to do go ahead and pull the wheels and the tires off we'll take them into the other part of the building break them down but this is how bad those rears were i mean they were just good tread but there's actually a piece of tread missing on one of them which i think is kind of funny um but yeah bad so four wheel drive look at the mud that's up in here yeah she's been she, she's she's been sent deep somewhere somewhere along the line um but man this thing runs and drives really good the axles are in good shape things you find we're going to clean all this up before we uh before we send it down the road um you know things like this that are, are buried that are hidden behind a cover pop that cover when you go to buy one look at your electronics look at your engine if they get covered in mud real bad they'll stain and so uh you know those are the things that i looked at but you can't see up under the gas tank or behind the gas tank when you're when you're looking to buy something but as you see somebody kept it relatively clean somebody hit it with the old pressure washer before i came along so what we're working on first first off what i want to do is i want to put in this uh, relay kit here's our kit we're going to open it up together i've never done one of these the reviews are really good um, there's actually a couple of videos on youtube on putting them in uh it's pretty straightforward it's two relays and uh, I think part of the problem that Honda was having with this is low voltage. And here's, here's how I determined that. This battery was dead. And before I turned the camera on, I was gonna go ahead and shift it before I put this on. And it wouldn't shift. It, it, it would it shift out of neutral and then it would get hung up in first or second. Um, and it couldn't get back to neutral. And I was rocking it and doing all that good stuff. I put the battery charger on it, didn't change a thing hit the hit the shifter and it shifted so i think low voltage plays a role in why some of these don't shift uh if your battery's weak or old that probably has something to do with it but apparently these relays override all of that like that i mean five minutes maybe putting it in you know taking everything off of it maybe 10 total so before we button up anything else um gonna zip tie the uh the harness itself uh anywhere that i can just to kind of keep it nice and secure buttoned up out of the way let's see what happens we're gonna turn it on 
and uh, let's see if it shifts because that's what it's supposed to do now. It's first. It's in engaged now. Let's go back to neutral. This is where it would hang up before. Shift it back into neutral. Okay. Back into neutral. I forgot this thing's full time four wheel drive. You can spin all the hubs on this one. You got all the traction, which is actually what makes this system very simple. This particular model, a foot shift would have been ideal, but full time four wheel drive, if you if you take care of them and the, you don't let the axles get all real dirty and bound up, they're not that hard to drive and you've always got engagement with your four wheel drive system. But it is certainly a great off roader. So there we go, there's first. Right back to neutral. All right, I'll put reverse, let's see what reverse does. If I remember how to do reverse. Okay, there's reverse. Go back to neutral. I think a lot of it has to do with the power and the voltage um, and just not having to go through the rest of the electronics. But uh, I, I won't call it a, a total success until we actually put some miles on it. But as of right now, it's shifting better than it did before. And for less than twenty dollars for the kit, that's a that's a win. And it really, you probably didn't have to take the tank out. You could have set it to the side. But I want to clean all this up anyway. I want to get it as clean as we can. So uh, she's got a date with a pressure washer real soon. Just like that, master cylinders replaced. I mean, this is nine out of 10 a copy. It's not Honda, but it will certainly work. I did had to, uh, this lever, the, the factory lever was a tad thick for this opening here. I mean, I just took about 10 thousandths off of it and it slid right in. Look, there's no, there's no binding or anything. Um, it matches the original handle. Once everything's cleaned up, it's gonna look really good. Most folks are not even ever gonna notice. The, the real tail on this is this rear view mirror uh, mount, whatever. It works and it's cheap. So Maddie, I, if, you, if you're interested in a master cylinder, um, Maddie makes a lot of different styles. They make this style and they also make the one on the 84, uh, which I really like. It's got the clear reservoir on the top. Again, the big takeaways on these is where your output or your discharge is. You wanna make sure it's the same as whatever you have. If your output's on the inside of the box here or on the front, as long as you match that up, everything else should go real smooth for you. Next, what we're gonna probably do is tackle the seat. We're gonna reupholster the seat. We're gonna strip that one down, reupholster that. And then I guess we'll mount the tires. And once we do that, then we'll take it out, we'll ride it, we'll test it. And, uh, and if she tests good and she earns it, then we'll give her a really good detail. And I'll probably go in tonight and order some decals for it. Uh, we'll go back factory with this. This machine's going to look great. So the only other thing that, and so what I'll do is I'll have to crunch some numbers. Everything for me is always a, a it's a business decision more than anything else. Um, the, the screen on this is broken. It doesn't light up any longer. It's not a game changer for me. The lights work reverse, which I think is important. Uh, neutral, so you'll know where to start it. And of course, your oil temperature sending unit light uh, needs to work as well and be accurate. So that being said, we'll see. We'll run the numbers. We'll see how much money we've got invested in it. We don't have a lot of time, believe it or not. Maybe a couple hours, which you know is, is no big deal in the scheme of things. Um, 
if, if we can financially do it and still make a good return on our investment, then I will put a dash in it. We'll do a video on that separately. I just don't have one now and we'll see. You know, fixing machines, whatever it is, it doesn't have to be ATVs. You have to draw a line somewhere. Is it safe to operate? Is it, st is it still a good value? You can get upside down really quick, nickel and dime and something like this, making it perfect. And the problem is, is it will never be perfect. You can make it better, but it will never be perfect again, unless you are willing to take it to that step, the next level. Um, there were some push pins that were missing. There were some that were broken. I've bought push pins. You can get those at Harbor Freight. You can get a whole assortment of them for like 10 bucks. We'll put a couple more of those in there. Just the little little details that people want to look for when they spend their hard-earned money. I want to give them a good value for that. I, I aim to give them a good running and driving machine. Cosmetically, it will make it as look as good as we possibly can without breaking the bank. So that's a wrap for this video, uh, the Honda 1998 450ES. Uh, we got all the kind of little things that people put off. That's really all that was wrong with this machine. It's just little nitpicky things. We're really trying to take it to the next level, and that's what it takes. We got it real good on this machine. The next time we bring it in, we're gonna do a full mechanical service. Front and rear diff, we're gonna check those. Change the oil, air filter, oil filter apply new decals to the machine and detail it and it will be ready to go to market i'm gonna hate to see it go the 450 is the last of the dinosaurs just a proven simple machine to work on all time full-time four-wheel drive however you want to say it you know keep it simple stupid we've all heard that well this is what that is this is true mechanical four-wheel drive not a lot to go wrong with it no electronic clutches or your sensors or any of that to to really fumble with so thank you for watching i appreciate it uh y'all have a great day and we'll see you on the next one <laughs>